Conversations with four of my favorite people next Oprah. Yo, yeah, Corey, people have been coming in here all day trying to work off New Year's Eve, and they've been dragging their tail behind it, but you're just burning down the house here. Oh, you're trying to keep that competitive edge, man. Really? So tell me, uh, was it your computer date that provided all this yeah. motivational inspiration? Right. Yeah. Oh, come on. I'm not trying to pry here, but I'm going to pry. Well, how, how did she rate? She's on a scale of Cindy Crawford and Lassie. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Max. She was beautiful. Mm. And she was funny, and she was smart in her own weird kind of way. It was just uh, one tiny little problem. Oh, don't tell me she's married. Ah, uh, no, actually, she was married five different times. Three times to me. <laughs> the computer fixed you up with Tina. This is what you can do with your so-called injunction. Go ahead. Have a snit. But that is a legal order, Blair. Signed by a judge and everything. Saying that you are a stop. Don't you love that word? A stop and prevented from taking over the sun till the courts decide the issue of rightful ownership. Fine. Get your space cadet head out of Todd's office. I'm sorry, I... D What's going on? Well, you know that getting upset isn't good for the baby. Oh, do you think it... letting this little blonde bimbo get a hold of Todd's newspaper is good for my baby? I don't think so. Tina, that is never, ever gonna happen, ever. Frank, stop me. Uh. What's this for? Ah, so I can remember the best New Year's I've had in many a moon. Hmm. There's many more where that came from. <laughs> First, we need to get this place cleaned up, though, or uh, we're not ever going to be able to open again. Here you go. Oh, you know, I would love to help you, but Andy's on her way over here right now to plan a certain wedding. Oh, so we really are getting married, huh? Mm-hmm. We're going to live happily ever after, because nothing and nobody is going to stop us. You want me to talk? All right, I'll talk. But you got to promise to keep Margaret Saybrook out of this. I promised that I would listen, and that's all. If Marty's involved, we'll handle it. Yeah, right. And while the wheels of justice are spinning, she could get hurt. That's not going to happen on my watch. You're going to have to trust me on that. Yeah, I can't trust anyone but you. Oh, good. Good, it is you. I wasn't going to believe it until I saw it myself. It's good. You found him. Now you can get him out of this mess. He's an innocent man. These offices, this newspaper belonged to Todd, who explicitly excluded you from his will. No, Todd was going to change that. You know, I may not be in that will, but my baby is, and she will never know what a truly amazing man her father was. And all I can give her is what he left her, his legacy. And I will not surrender one inch of that to you or to anyone else. Is that clear? Security, this is Mrs. Manning. We have an intruder. Thank you. I'm not leaving my building until I'm good and ready. Um, <laughs> would you please um, thank <clears throat> Mrs. Roberts out? Come on. You know, my poor brother, he never did figure out what you were up to, you, you thief, bloodsucker. Get out of this building! Hiding 
Something for me, Kathy? Oh, no, no. It's just something you probably don't want to see. Really, I... Marty and Dylan wouldn't put their announcement in the paper today. Today's Todd's birthday. Oh, no, you know, and little Miss Saybrook, she killed my husband, and now she's making plans to live happily ever after. Hmm. Wedding do's and don'ts. Don't leave your eye sculpture out in the sun. <laughs> Did you pay money for that? I just want this to be the most wonderful wedding anybody's ever had. That's all. Well, baby, all you gotta do is show up, and it'll be the most wonderful day of my life. Now, Max's liquor order, Dylan. Oh, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Put him on the bar. Right. So what do we got around here? Let's see. We got these four here. Let's see what this is. Well, I know you like to have a bit of the Irish stuff around. Uh, so do I. I think beats it on a cold, wet night. Yeah, so they say. All right. There you are. All right, see it. Marty. Boy, did you look far away. What? Dreaming about the wedding, were you? Would you like to tell me how this woman just got in here? Yes, sir, they picked her up last night for disorderly conduct. But Mr. Holden came by and vouched for her. And... So I was released in order to come back in today. And you complied. And I do appreciate that. Because now the DA wants to up the charges against you to aiding and abetting this fugitive. He did nothing wrong. Look, can I just tell you what I know about this? <sighs> Take Thornhart back in the hall, Holden. much for our Irish friend. He sure knows how to sell himself to women. So I couldn't form an intelligent opinion on my own with all my hormones racing. Well, you tell me. Explain why you trust this guy so much, or why I should. Because he's honest. And you know that. Because, because I've always been able to take the measure of a man. How do you do that? I don't know if I can explain it. I just look him in the eye, and if they can look back without flinching. What if he's a sociopath? They don't flinch. This guy, Thornhart, he's wanted for at least two murders. And yet, you believe that he's innocent to the point that you'll break the law just to help him. Let me explain this to you, okay? I drove Patrick Thornhart to Washington, D.C. to meet his friend at the Irish Embassy. Ian Kent was his name, okay? Patrick got on the car phone, called him, and his friend said that he could give him safety if we got into the Embassy. That happened. I dropped him off. He went in. I was about to take off, and all of a sudden, there's this gunshot. And Patrick is diving back into my car. The whole thing was a trap. Can't you see that? He went in there, and there was some guy named Bass waiting there to kill him. That's according to Thornhart. What if those guys that were inside, what if they just wanted to arrest Patrick? He is wanted in Ireland for two murders. These were real policemen, even Irish policemen. Don't you think they would have shouted halt or something before opening fire in a public place? What would you do to a cop in your department if they did that? The bottom line is if, if I hadn't been waiting outside with that car, Patrick Thornhart would be dead right now. And now as your mayor, I'm asking you, the good people of Landview, to... join me on the threshold of a new era. Nigel! Sir, tell the most recent Mrs. Ace of Buchanan to corral her junk and get it off my desk. Uh, madam, Mr. Buchanan wonders if I could assist you in locating a more congenial workspace. You tell Mr. Buchanan that I am the mayor of this town, and until I am inaugurated, I am forced to work out of my own home. Sir, uh, madam, inform Madam Mayor. If she doesn't move her mayoral butt, I will move it for her. Would somebody please tell 
me how I'm supposed to concentrate in this madhouse. Oh, what is this? A memo to Asa regarding the Hotel Montgomery. Fine. Best. Renee. Nigel. Would you please ask Mr. Buchanan if he's planning a rendezvous with his old, I mean, as in ancient, ex-wife? Nigel, Mr. Buchanan says that it is none of Mrs. Buchanan's damn business. Let's say it wasn't some kid with firecrackers or a car backfiring. Let's say that somebody did shoot at Patrick. You're sure it was Bass? No, I'm not sure. But whoever it was wanted Patrick dead. Seems to me that you've got a death wish of your own. You drive a murder suspect to uh, Washington, D.C. and back? Well, I think the key word there is suspect. I mean, he is innocent until proven guilty, right? And I know in my heart that he is innocent. And I have a feeling that you feel the same way. Otherwise, you wouldn't be standing here talking to me. Hey, well, um, my gut instinct and 65 cents will get you a cup of coffee. See, what I re need right now is solid evidence. And that's going to take time. But for now, I'll see what I can do by getting the charges dropped against you. But you have to swear to me that you're going to stay well clear of all of this. I swear I'll be a model citizen. Okay, you're up, Slugger. I hope that one day I'll have a chance to tell you how much I appreciate what you've done for me. Okay, Thornheart. Showtime. You want me to believe broke out of my jail just so that you could find this. Yeah. And this is supposed to prove that Inspector Bass is a member of a terrorist organization. Oh, I, don't, I don't know where I it was. It's like you and I stepped into one of the pictures of the magazine. <laughs> well, welcome back to reality. And there's Amy. Looks like y'all gonna get started on your homework. Uh, hey. Think this will do it? The complete guide to the perfect wedding? Oh, my gosh, yes. Let's get started okay. right away. <sighs> I really am so bad at planning things that I don't think I could do this without you. Hey, I'm really honored you asked me. Well, actually, to tell you the truth, there's something else that I wanted to ask, if you're willing. Anything, just name it. It would mean a lot to me and to Dylan if you'd be my maid of honor. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> well, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Marty will be a beautiful bride. I wonder what color her dress will be. Probably red, so the blood won't show when she kills someone else. That's probably my call to Ireland. Blair, Blair, they told you. <laughs> yes. Uh, could I speak with the owner, please? Canelli here. How may I help you? Uh, yes, Mr. Ken Kennelly. I'm sorry I missed you. I was in Inish Crag, but you were closed. My name is um, Mrs. Todd Manning. Oh, yes, you're the widow of the lad that died here. My deepest sympathies, Mrs. Manning. Thank you. Look, I was wondering, I'm, I'm trying to find the truth out about this man, this Patrick Thornhart, and um, what role he played in my husband's death. Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure now that I can tell you any more than the police told you that... Patrick Thornhart took us all in, even my missus. He was a smooth one, all right. You know, he killed his girlfriend in cold blood, and then Inspector Quilligan, and arrives here all smiling he was, and, and, and charmed the good time out of that lovely American girl, Miss Saybrook. What kind of good time did he charm her with? Uh, like... Lovebirds they were from the start. There were the long walks in the rain and the wind and then the cuddling by the fire and the horseback riding and the dancing. They even shared a room. It all seemed so beautiful. How could it ever have ended this way? Mr. Canelli, I need you to be 
very clear about this. They shared a room. Uh, well, we were um, crowded one night, and there was only the one room left. And after that, well, it, it must have been the full moon, and they, they kept the room uh, for, for a week. Thank you so much, Mr. Canal. You've been very helpful. Goodbye. You thought Marty was little Miss Innocent over in Ireland? She shared a bed with Patrick Thornhart for a week. They were lovers. That little witch has been lying to everyone in this town, including Dylan. It must be computer kismet. You and Tina are doomed to be together forever. All right, all right. I can see where it would be humorous, you know, the computer yeah. setting me up with Tina, but I just hope she doesn't read something into this mess. You know, if she takes this as some kind of heavy-duty omen, I am dead. This is going to be a big problem for me. Ah. Well, here's a chance to test your theory. Here's Tina. Hey. 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 How are you? Looking I'm good. Great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, boy, oh, boy, I'm going to love this workout. Yeah. Better, Tina. You don't have any of those... New Year's Eve headaches? Oh, Cord, I don't get headaches. I just give them. And you know that two-bit gold-digging tramp Blair boy, she has a doozy. Okay. Uh, listen, I've, I've got an interview, hopefully with a gorgeous woman, about a job to be the manager. Uh, you kids have fun. <laughs> so, Tina, he asked without actually really wanting to know, what are you so charged up about? Oh, absolutely everything. Just every day, I've never felt so empowered, like I'm ready to take charge. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. You know what I say, Cord? Huh. Down with Blair and up with us, you and me. Because, was it a coincidence that we got set up on New Year's Eve? I don't think so. And I think it's time we figured out exactly what it does mean. Don't you? Blair, you've got to calm down. I mean it. You know that high blood pressure runs in our family. What do you think you're doing right now? Okay. Your baby? I'm trying to find the murderers of my baby's father. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Honey, you're trying to see flame. You are fixated on Marty Saybrook. So somebody says that she shared a... a room with Patrick Thornhart. And that doesn't necessarily... Do you want to call the innkeeper back? He's the one that said it. He's the one that said that they were doing it. He called them lovebirds. Marty fell into bed with this thrill killer. She got him wrapped around her little finger and then talked him into killing Todd. Blair, why would she do that? Because! Because he was marrying me again. He'd gotten his life together. He was happy and she couldn't stand it. Yeah, but she wanted to get him back for the revenge, the revenge for what he had done to her. That's what it was about, honey. I know that you're hurting, but I can't stand here and let you say these things. If you keep going, you could endanger your baby. Is that what you want? I want! I want Marty Saybrook to know that she can't get away with murder. You know, at first I thought you were kidding, but you really are serious. You really want a traditional wedding with all the trimmings, don't you? Think it'll drive Dylan crazy? <laughs> I think it was whatever came up now. Well... I just want to be in Mrs. Dillon Moody more than anything. That's why I want the wedding, to feel like a real celebration. And that's what you're going to have. You're going to have a white satin carpet, flower girls, everything. <laughs> now, we're talking a um, pretty big guest list here. Will that um, include Mr. Thornhart? No, let's hope he's on his way to Ireland by now. Then you haven't, I mean, you, you, you took my advice and you didn't tell Dylan about you and Patrick. I guess not. <laughs> One happy guy. You know, I was thinking, um, maybe wearing my mother's dress, but I was afraid I'd put it on and I'd start missing her. Take a look. Rasky of the sun, Miss Saybrook. Care to comment? What more can I tell you? I found the bloody coin in this bloody hotel room. It's got to count for something, right? It's probably got his fingerprints all over it. So what if they're there, huh? Maybe, uh, 
Maybe Bass was investigating the men of 21. Maybe that's evidence that he collected. Assuming that you found it where you just told me that you found it. Yeah, and while you decide if I'm lying or not, someone else is gonna die. That coin is the killer's insignia. They're planning an assassination. How many bloody times do I have to tell you that? Okay, okay. Tell me, who's the target? Huh? When? Where? I don't know. Ask your friend Bass. Maybe I can do better than that. I've got a friend that works at the CIA. So if this thing is as big as uh, you say it is, then Washington's going to know something about it. Yeah, Rick. Hey, Bob Buchanan. Yeah, it's good to hear you, too. Listen, I need a quick favor. Anything you can tell me about an Irish terrorist group called the Men of 21? No. Supposedly uh, an alleged agent in this country right now. And I don't know any details. Uh, it just came to my attention. All right, great. Look, whatever you dig up, I owe you big time. Okay, thanks. Now what? We wait. Zyadman, make sure Thornhart gets a bite to eat. Yes, sir. I'm gonna let you know just as soon as my friend calls me back. You better hope that somebody somewhere has heard of the men of 21. You know, see, I, I really wouldn't read too much into this. I mean, the computer goofed up. We uh, went out, we had a good time, you know, a couple of my ties, and uh, that's it. It's no big deal, really. Oh, Cord Roberts, why do I even bother? Don't you see? There aren't any accidents when it comes to you and me. You know that dating form that we filled out? There were some very powerful subliminal forces at work. Yeah, you're damn right. I, I was pretty horny. Oh, no, no. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Don't you see? If you would have been reading up like I've been reading up, then you would know that your deeper psychological needs have been erecting this major block. You've regressed to infantile insecurity, sublimating your need for abandonment into some sexual drive. I've been doing all that. Yeah. And I'm even worse off than you. But huh. it still comes down to the same thing. We've never gotten over one another. That's why I ended up with all of these reptiles. Do you think it was my low self-esteem that made me marry Kane Rogan and David Vickers? Uh-uh. It was you. Me? All right, look, Doctor. Uh, what's the bottom line here? I mean, let's cut to the chase. Uh, what is the root of all this deep analysis? You know, what are you trying to tell me? Are you still in love with me? Are you crazy? Have you heard of father fixation? I'm your daddy now. Oh, there you go. Hey. Aren't you? Aren't you always there when I need you? Let's not go there. I don't want to. Uh, thanks, don't. because, Court, you are just as stuck as I am. That sounds pretty grim to me, Tina. So tell me here, Doc, uh, what chances have we got? Huh? As a matter of fact, there is a cure for this. Couples therapy. Mm. How well do you know this Thornhart guy? Is he a killer? I can't answer this. Come on, let's go. You okay? I'm fine. I have a feeling that that's not going to be the last reporter to show up at our door. I don't know why they don't just take this Thornhart guy and send him back to Ireland and end all this. There's nothing we can do about it. Oh, yes, there is. Um, in fact, right now I'm going to go over and talk to Blair. Get these people from the sun to quit bothering. Dylan! No, it'll be fine. Remember, she hates me. Uh, hello, Rhody. Oh, hi. Yeah, Andy. Yeah, she's right here. Bo Buchanan. Maybe it's good news. Yeah, I doubt it. Hi, Bo. It's Marty. What's up? Look, I was wondering if you got a moment, maybe you could come by the office, uh, clear up a few things. Now? Now's good. This could be important, Marty. Okay. Sure, I'm on my way. More questions. Is this thing with Patrick ever going to end? You want me to come with you? 
No, thanks. Um, if you could just stay here, and when, when Dylan gets back, remind him that we're supposed to meet at the mall to pick out china patterns. Not that I'm in the mood right now. Come on, Marty, this whole thing is going to be over soon. Just go talk to Bo, and then meet with Dylan. I mean, come on, what, what happened in the past, it's, it's over. You and Dylan have a whole future ahead of you, beginning with the best spring wedding anyone's ever had. No one is leaving this room until Mr. Buchanan explains to me whether or not he's planning a sleazy affair with Renee at a hot sheets hotel in Atlantic City. Perhaps, madam, you'd like to refresh your tour. Sir, Mrs. Buchanan would like to ask you, she's wondering... She was chewing on local weed. This woman is totally out of her mind. Now, why don't you go play mayor for a while and leave me alone? Nigel, you've just heard a man attempting to weasel out of answering one simple question. Oh, Alex. You know something? You gotta just, you gotta ruin everything. You want an answer? Mm. Here it is. Mm. I was planning a surprise for you. A big inaugural bash in your honor. Champagne. Caviar, lobster, filly mignon, lots of movie stars, also a floor show, fireworks, all at the elegant Montgomery Hotel. Anyway, that was the plan. And the way you are acting, lady, you are going to be very lucky if I buy you a corn dog. I just couldn't help being jealous. I love you so much. It's like, it's like a disease. But I really do appreciate your thoughtfulness. And I promise I will be better next time. Come on, Nigel. Let's leave this great man to do his great work. Yes, yes, 50 cases of my favorite champagne delivered to the Hotel Montgomery, Atlantic City. I, I don't know about this couple therapy. I mean, we're not even a couple anymore. You remember that? Yeah, but we are in our codependency, synergistically speaking. And therapy would, would free us and help us meet and relate to other people. Hey, no offense. I'm free already. I, I don't have any problems meeting people. I, I don't need to sit in some office and look at some guy's diploma on the wall and have him tell me how to do that. I, I can do it. All right, fine. Court, you do what you want, okay? But you know what? You're living in the Stone Age. So why don't you just go back to your grave and eat bear meat? And if you do change your mind, I'll be in the sauna. Hey, Cord. Hi. Oh, hey, hey, Maggie. Hi, how you doing? Uh, no, Max isn't around. He said he'd be right back, though. Is, uh, is there something I can help you with? Okay, here's the deal. Um, I've been worried a lot about Frankie. Yeah, yeah, so you said. Listen, do you have any indication how bad his hearing problem might be? No, I'm not sure, but the problem right now is that Max doesn't want to admit that that's a possibility, so I... I did something a little dicey. I, uh... I made an appointment for Frankie with an audiologist at Atlantic Hill Hospital. Without telling Max about it? Telling me what? Um... About this.
Frankie? Yeah. Is this about that theory of yours? You make a doctor's appointment for my kid. Like I can't take care of him. No, Max, not at all. I, I know I'm way out of bounds on this. I just really think you should have his hearing checked. I mean, think about it. What, what harm could it do? I want you to leave my kids alone. And I'm not going to tell you again. So, Miss Saybrook wouldn't make a comment? No. She seemed pretty shook up, though. Maybe that means something. Of course it means something. That means we're on the right track. Wait till she sees the next edition. I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to continue to breathe down Miss Saybrook's neck. And the next time you see her, ask her what it's like to share a romantic week in Ireland shacking up with a murderer. At the risk of sounding like a broken record. Would you want me to relax? Sit down. You tell me how I can do that, Cassie. As a matter of fact, I do have an idea. I'm on my way to London. Clint has selected me to cover the UN conference on terrorism and maybe see Kevin get a tour of the London Times, the whole bit. How about if I stay on for a few days afterwards? I could go to Ireland, see what I could dig up, check into things a little more. Been there, I've done that. Blair, I'm a reporter, not the widow. I could find out things that people haven't even mentioned Cassie, to you. look, I... I appreciate it, really, I do. And just knowing that you care about me means a lot. And fine. Do all the digging that you want. What you're gonna find under some rock is that Marty Saybrook was conspiring with her lover to kill my husband. My friend called back. I'm on hold right now. Early word is nobody's ever heard of the men of 21. Well, then they're lying. They know who they are. They're just not going to bloody tell you about it. Yeah, Rick. Yeah, I'm still here. You're sure? Nobody's heard of the men of 21. All right, let me ask you, no offense, but is this a need to know thing? He doesn't need to know, don't tell him. No, all right, all right, that's it. That's it. All right, thanks for your help, though. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. No doubt the stories you're gonna be when another dead body shows up, or two, or three, or four. And this is all going to happen because of some secret society that nobody's ever heard of. Not even the CIA. Oh, I'm sorry, that's my fault. CIA is infallible, right? Come on. You said it yourself, maybe the CIA does know, but they're not gonna share it with you. You know what, think what you like. But the men of 21 are out there and some VIP is gonna die. I don't know why, or where, or when. All those answers are hidden in a piece of sheet music. Session shatter a marriage. What is happening to my husband? Can another woman's revenge destroy a man's life? You're never gonna get away with it. What's the charge, counselor? Murder. Everything changes in 96 on all my children. I had to come back and just tell you that I'm 
I'm really very sorry. See, when I made the appointment with the hearing specialist, I, I didn't mean to spring it on you like that. I just... I guess I thought that I'd be helping you out if I took the first step. But, uh... I realize now that that was going too far. And I understand why you would be angry with me. I seem to do that a lot, you know, I go way too far. It seems to be my trademark. <laughs> but I thought that if I didn't pursue this, and your son was disadvantaged somehow because I held back. Don't you want to have Frankie tested just to prove me wrong? I mean, I hear that this doctor is one of the best. I'm doing it again. I'm sorry. I know this has to be your decision. Grammy Dan, that I just might be concerned about my son's welfare. Saybrook having no comment regarding allegations of her involvement with the Irish murderer. Oh, no. Bring up startling new information. Use the innkeeper's love birds quote, all right? <laughs> Good. I want to talk to you, Blair. Busy day for security. It's all right, Lou. I can take care of this one. So, what can I do for you, Dylan? Well, you can start by stop slandering Marty's name. You know, I'm real sorry about all the troubles you've had lately, Blair, but Marty had nothing to do with Todd's death. You poor boy. You really are in the dark. Well, maybe you won't be after our uh, next edition hits the stand. In fact, Dylan, you may even thank me. As a matter of fact, you might want to help me with a new headline. I was thinking maybe Eris. An Irish murderer in love nest? What do you think about that? Listen, Blair. Todd and Marty made peace with each other. Now, do you think that'd make him real happy? You printing lies all over the front of the I paper about him? I think Todd would want me to go after the truth. That's why I just made a call to Innish Craig. That's a little island right off the coast of Ireland. And guess what I found out? Your little Marty and Patrick Thornhart shared a cozy little bedroom there. Now, how does that make you feel? Yes. You really haven't given me that much to go on, Patrick. The coin that you could have found anywhere and some blood-stained sheet of music that I've never seen. The music is the key in the assassination plan. Other men at 21 wouldn't be that desperate to get it back. Yeah, but the only people that have seen the music are you and Marty Saybrook. Yeah, and poor Siobhan, who is dead, and Inspector Gwilligan, who is dead. Look, until I know what is in that code, if in fact there even is a code. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to tell you. Except that you're gonna have to be returned to your cell. Well, 
The American Broadcasting Company, ABC.